This pattern works for many different sizes of water bottle. The pattern includes options for diameters anywhere from two and a half to three and an eighth inches. And you can adjust the height of the pattern as you like. So whether your water bottle looks like this or like this, you can adjust the pattern to fit. I purchased my water bottle at the Dollar Tree and this is the bottle I'm gonna be using to make my holder today. If you like this size and style, I'll put a link to this item below. For this project, you're going to want cotton fabric for the outside of the water bottle holder, cotton fabric for the inside, as well as for the handle. You can also add an optional drawstring. For my drawstring, I'm going to be using rat tail cord, and I also have a spring action cord stop here that I'm gonna use as well. You can visit my website for the free pattern and measurement guide. A link to my website is listed below. The first step is to decide how tall you want the holder to be. So looking at my water bottle, I've decided that I want my holder to be eight and a half inches tall, just to this rim. I want my holder to be eight and a half inches tall. This is how tall I'm gonna make the exterior rectangle. Then I'm gonna take that measurement and add one and a half inches, which gives me 10. This is how tall I'm gonna make my lining rectangle. To figure out the width, I need to know the size of my water bottle. I'm gonna measure the diameter of my water bottle to figure out the size I need to make. This water bottle is just a bit less than three inches. It measures two and seven eighths. So I'm gonna to go to my chart and look at the bottle diameters and I can see that mine is a size large. This is a size with two and seven eighths inch diameter. You have two choices for the size you want to make. You can make a regular fit or a snug fit and I'll show you the difference between those in just a second. I'm gonna make the snug fit, which means the width of my rectangles is going to be 10.5. So my exterior rectangle is going to be eight and a half by 10 and a half. And my lining rectangle is going to be 10 by 10 and a half. You can make the handle for the water bottle holder however long you want. You can make it crossbody for the shoulder or just handheld. I'm gonna make a crossbody strap today. So I want mine to be pretty long, which is the width of my fabric. So I want mine to be about 41 inches long. I'm gonna add one inch to that, which gives me 42. And that's gonna be the cut length for my handle piece. I also want my handle to be 5 eighths of an inch wide. Since I want it 5 8 inch wide, it means I'm gonna cut my strip to be two and a half inches wide. So my rectangle for the handle is gonna be 42 by two and a half. Let's talk a little bit about the different fits for the water bottle holder. Both of the holders were made using this method, but you can see that they're very different sizes. This water bottle is quite a bit larger than this one. So this one is my size small, and this one is a size large. This holder is made using the snug fit. It fits really close to the bottle. Because of that, it's a little harder to get in and out, so you wouldn't want to select the snug fit if you plan to remove your water bottle a lot. This one was made using the regular fit, and you can see that I can pinch the fabric on the side. This makes it a whole lot easier to take your water bottle in and out. So if you plan to frequently remove your water bottle, this is a good option because it will slide in quite easily. The regular fit gives you a lot of leeway when you're sewing as well as when you're putting in and taking out your water bottle. The snug fit is less forgiving, but it does mold the water bottle really well. So you have to be pretty exact when sewing this one, but it has a great result. Let's start by working with the lining. First, make sure that you have it in the correct position. So this is my width, which was 10 and a half, and my height, which was 10. 
The dimensions could be really close, so it may look square even when it's not. So make sure that you have it in the right orientation. We're gonna start by making ourselves some guide marks. So turn your rectangle to the back side. The first thing I'm gonna do is draw a line two and a half inches from the top edge. I'm gonna use this as a guide and I'm gonna to go to the ironing board and press. Fold the top edge over to touch your line. So you should see just a little bit of the right side of the fabric. This gives you a fold that's one and a quarter inches tall. You want to make sure that you press this really well because it's going to need to stay in place for the whole time that we're assembling the project. Next, gently open up the fold. You still want to see the crease, but you want to lay it flat. Next, along one of the sides, we're going to make ourselves some guide marks for sewing. We have to leave a channel open for our drawstring, as well as to turn the water bottle. If you're not going to make the drawstring, you can skip the first marking here. Let's first mark where we're going to have the opening for our drawstring. From the top edge, mark a half an inch down. Then mark three fourths of an inch below that. This is one and a quarter inches from the edge. This gives you a little opening that is three fourths of an inch wide. So a half an inch down and one and a quarter inches down to give you a three fourths inch window. This is where your drawstring will exit. If you're not doing the drawstring, you can skip those markings. Then further down, you want to leave a two inch opening along the side to turn. I like to leave my opening about two inches from the bottom. And then so I don't make any mistakes, I'm going to draw a line to show me where to sew. You don't have to do this, but it may be helpful. So I'm gonna stitch from the edge to my half point mark. And then I'm gonna skip my three fourths of an inch and then I'm gonna sew down until I get to my next mark. And then I'm gonna skip those two inches and sew to the bottom. My seam allowance is gonna be half an inch from the edge, so I drew my marks a half an inch away. So you can see here, I'm gonna sew for a little bit and stop and then start again and sew for a while and stop. And then I'm gonna leave it open, start again, and then stop. So there's gonna be two openings left along this side. Next, turn your fabric right side up. Make sure that the top fold is at the top. Fold your fabric in half with right sides touching lining up the side edges, and pin. Now, being as exact as you can, sew with a half an inch seam allowance in the designated sections, here, here, and here. Next, take your exterior rectangle and make sure it's oriented correctly. This is my top edge, and this is my side. So it's my width of 10.5 and my height of 8.5 and this is going to be my top edge. Take your rectangle, fold it in half, pin the sides, and sew with a half an inch seam allowance. Now that our side seam's been stitched, we're gonna go ahead and press it open. To do this, I like to roll it so that the seam is in the middle. Open the seam allowance with my fingers. And then press with just the tip of your iron. You don't really want to press these sides flat and you don't want to eliminate the crease you already made. Do the same thing for the main fabric. Notice that our seam looks like we sewed it the whole way, 
but there's actually an opening here and here. To cut out the circles for the base, I like to cut out two small rectangles, one from my lining and one from my exterior fabric, and then I'll place them right sides together. Then I'll trace my pattern. And I'll place a pin in the center and cut around. Next, we're gonna add the base to the holder. If you're making the regular fit, you can probably go ahead and pin it in place. If you're making the snug fit, the sides of the water bottle are going to be just a bit smaller than your circular base, but we need it to be bigger to have a seam allowance. So to help it fit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut little snips at the bottom of the side piece. We're going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance to sew, so our clips need to be smaller than that. I'm going to cut clips that are about an eighth of an inch tall and about a half an inch apart. This will allow the fabric on the bottom of the side piece to expand to fit around the larger curve of the circle. Again, this step will be more important if you're making the snug fit. Take care to control the size of your clips. Now I'm ready to attach the circular base. Your side piece should be wrong side out. Take your circular piece and line it up with the inside. I like to line up the edge with the seam first. and pin it in place. I'm just going to do a little stitch with my pin. And then I'm going to pin all the way around. And as I pin around, I'm going to gently pull, especially if I made the snug fit, so those clips allow the fabric to expand to fit the circle. I'm placing my pins close to the edge and I'm only going through a little bit of fabric. Some fabrics spread and fit around the edge of the circle better than others, so you may need to play with the number of clips and pin a couple times to get it to fit just right. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew this in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. When I do sew, I like to sew with the circle on the bottom. I'll place the fabric on the machine so that the circle is flat and sew around. You may notice that you get a few pleats in this section. Um, if you sew slowly and arrange your fabric as you go, you should be able to eliminate those pleats. It's more common to get pleats if you're making the regular fit since the side piece is larger, but just go slow, look for pleats, and adjust the fabric as you need to as you're sewing. Be careful to watch your fingers. If you have a stiletto or a purple thing tool, it comes in really handy for this step. Now that the base is attached, we're going to clip the curves. Pinking shears is a great way to do this, but if you don't have them, you can use regular scissors. Take care not to get too close to your stitches. You don't want to end up with a hole or cut your thread. So I'm pretty much just gonna cut the seam allowance in half. Next, let's work on the handle. Take your strip of fabric that you're using for the handle and lay it right side down. Fold it in half lengthwise and press. Do this for the whole length of the strip. Next, open up the strip. 
Use the center fold that you just made as a guide. Take the edge of the fabric and fold it towards the center. You don't want it to overlap the center, but just be up against it. Your iron in the steam will probably be quite hot, so you can use a pressing tool to help you protect your fingers. I like to use a silicone spatula. Do this all the way down. And repeat on the other side. Again, don't overlap at the center. They should just barely meet. If there's a tiny gap in between the two, that's okay. Um, a tiny gap is better than them overlapping. Next, fold it in half again. Take care to be as exact as you can so that those folds line up. And press. Next we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew the folds together. You want to sew with a small seam allowance such as 1 8 of an inch or less. But you want to make sure that it's big enough that you catch all the folds. Press again. This will help to set the stitches as well as to make the handle nice and flat. Next, take the piece that's going to be the exterior of your bag. We're going to mark this in quarters so that we know where to put our handles. First, find your center seam. Fold it at that seam and fold the fabric in half. The fold that's opposite your seam will be your halfway point. So I'm going to use a pin to mark that halfway point. Then, once I have my halfway point marked, I'm going to pinch it closed so that the seam allowance and my pin match up. The two folds on either side now mark the quarters. So I'm going to put a pin on the right and a pin on the left. These two side pins will be where my handle goes. So I'm going to move this one because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to take my handle strip, make sure that it's not twisted. I want the edge with the stitching to go towards the back, but it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to make sure it's not twisted. I'm going to have the stitching pointed to the back and I'm going to place it inside the water bottle holder. and I'm going to pin one strap to either side. I'm going to center one strap with the left pin, and I'm going to center the other strap with the right pin. And I'm going to baste those in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, turn the main bag piece right side out. You want your lining piece to be wrong side out. Aligning the center seams, place the exterior piece inside the lining. I like to put the handles down in first. Align those center back seams. And pin around the top edge. Now 
stitch around the top with a half an inch seam allowance. To do this on the sewing machine, I like to lay the holder flat, move this section out of the way, and sew here. Because this area is so small, you won't be able to sew very much at once. You're only going to be able to sew about an inch or two, and then you're going to have to stop and readjust. Adjust the fabric in front of the foot. Make sure the first inch is clear and flat. We're sewing with a half an inch seam allowance. Sew about an inch or an inch and a half and stop. Readjust your fabric so that the section in front of your foot is clear and flat. I like to backstitch over the section with the handles. Next, pull the exterior fabric out. You want the seam allowance to be pointing towards the exterior fabric. Gently tug the two pieces so that you know it's fully folded at the stitch line. Press this in place. Take care not to eliminate the fold that you made previously on your lining. Reach through the large opening in your lining and pull it right side out. Check to make sure everything looks okay. And if it does, you can now sew the opening in the lining closed. You can pinch it and sew the edge with a super, super tiny seam allowance, such as a sixteenth of an inch. You want to keep it really small, otherwise you might end up making your water bottle holder too tight, especially if you're doing the snug fit. You can also slip stitch this closed. Since I don't want to have a ridge where the seam is, I'm going to slip stitch mine. Normally I would sew this closed with black thread, but I'm using pink today so that you can see it. If you need detailed instructions on how to do the slip stitch, see the link to my other video below. Next, we're going to tuck the lining into the exterior fabric, but we're not going to fold it at the seam. Instead, we're going to use the fold line that we made back at the beginning. That line should be three-fourths of an inch above your seam, so if your line has disappeared or if you can't find it anymore, you can mark three-fourths of an inch above your seam and fold there. You can see that because we pressed it back in the beginning, it naturally wants to fold there. Make sure this top section is nice and flat. Make sure that your handles are pointing up. Press again if you need to. Now turn the bag wrong side out, keeping this fold in place. So I'm going to reach down to the bottom bag, grab both layers, and flip it. This top section is where we're going to be sewing, so make sure it's laying nice and flat. We're going to do a top stitch along this edge, so about an eighth of an inch down from our exterior fabric and all the way around the top of our water bottle holder. You want to make sure that your handles are facing up when you do this. Again, we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from this top edge here all the way around. 
you're going to have to hold the other fabric out of the way as you do this. And again, just like before when we sewed on the circle, you're only going to be able to do a small section at a time. For our final step, let's add our drawstring. I'm using rat tail cord and there's not much to grip onto, so I'm going to make a little knot. I'm going to take it out later. And then if you go to your back seam where we left the little space at the beginning, there should be an opening where you can slide your drawstring through. So go ahead and do that. You may have to fiddle a bit to get it to pass by the seam allowance. Now I'm going to undo the knot I did before. Now I'm going to take the two ends of the cord and place them through my cord clamp. I'm going to pull the cords just a bit to make this step easier and I'm going to make a loop and pull it through and tie a knot. 